Well, I guess the sheep's out of the bag, because some of you actually listen to the Telos of Tech podcast. If you don't, come on, what are you guys doing? Subscribe, go check it out. Anyway, for those who don't listen, I am unsubscribing from Apple Music. And before you all think that I'm no longer an Apple fanboy or something, or Spotify is just so much better for some reason, it's really what I've discovered is quite personal about subscriptions. It's very subjective, and it varies a lot depending on people's preferences and their personal life. And Apple Music was fine. I have very little bad things to say about it, okay? I'm just explaining because so many people were asking me and a lot of people were quite upset when I announced that I'm not gonna keep paying Apple to stream music for years and years and years. So without further ado, I feel like I owe you all an explanation. As unsatisfying as it might be, here it is. So it's also worth mentioning that the day Apple Music was available, I subscribed to it, okay? From the beginning, way back when, I thought it was a great deal because at that time, when I was younger, I was spending a lot of money on iTunes. When I wanted to buy a song or a new album, I would easily drop 10, 15, sometimes $20 a month just to get music that I liked. So once I found out that you could have access to all the music for that low price, and it would be through Apple, I wouldn't have to download a third-party app and have another account, this would just go straight through my Apple ID, which I was already using anyway, and it could be built into the regular music app, I was all on board. I was like, okay, uh, I could only spend 10 bucks a month and I'll save so much money. So when I originally subscribed to it, I think I was using it more for its intended purpose, which is of course to listen to all the music you want to. I love the radio features and I love the ad-free streaming and being able to just think of any song I wanted and add it to my library and have that first party support was awesome, but things changed life change. You know, for a while I even had the Apple Music family membership and I would rent it out basically to friends and family members. They would pay me back three bucks a month and I was able to actually get the price of Apple Music even lower just by having other people pay me back for it and just having them as part of my Apple Music family. So I was doing that for a while and in time, less and less people were interested in that. They just started moving either to their own streaming services or were part of a different family bundle and eventually I realized it was just me and my wife both paying for 15 bucks a month Apple Music. And once we did that, my wife and I are kind of budgeters. We like looking at our expenses and seeing where we can cut down and where we can save more money. So my wife started suggesting that, you know what, I don't really use Apple Music that much anyway, so how about we just go to the individual plan because you don't need to keep paying for both of us. And she listens to most of her music through the YouTube app anyway. I know, I don't get it either. I much prefer the user interface in the layout of Apple Music compared to just standard YouTube, but at the end of the day, my wife doesn't listen to music that often, so she doesn't really care, and to her, it just was not worth the seven and a half dollars of her share to just have a slightly nicer user interface when listening to music occasionally. So she said, just opt for the individual plan, and at the time I had the Apple card, so I decided I'm gonna go for the annual membership, and that's what I did last year. So that meant with the Apple card, Apple Music, just for me, ended up costing around eight dollars a month, because you only have to spend a hundred dollars for the entire year, and that was how I justified it because it felt significantly cheaper than what I had been paying for a while but then the more I thought about it the more I realized how endless this Apple Music trap was and I think today especially we're dealing with subscriptions and memberships being thrown at us like constantly it's like more people are excited for the subscription options for certain products that you can pay for don't think of it as a total cost just think of it as it costs this much per day okay lots of companies are trying to push that on us the Galaxy Z Fold 2 it's not two thousand dollars it's just a dollar a day for four years sure you'll still be paying it off when it's no longer getting software updates but it's only a buck a day come on it's not that expensive it's really easy and I think that's a sales pitch that a lot of companies are using these days to make offers and subscriptions seem like they're a good deal but of course once you look at the long haul you realize how much money has truly been spent looking back assuming I didn't do the whole family membership thing on average let's just say I spent a hundred dollars on Apple music a year that means that that in the past five years of having access to all the music I want to listen to, I've dropped $500 on music that I don't even get to keep if I decide I don't want to pay for this anymore, which means that, you know, the second you unsubscribe or the second that you're no longer paying for Apple Music, all that stuff is gone and you're $500 poorer. And, you know, there's no way to buy Apple Music outright. You're going to keep paying for it for a lifetime, which means at the end of the day, you're dropping a lot of money. And the truth is, in more recent history, I've been listening to music less and less. When I was younger and I was going 
going to high school and college. In between classes or while I was doing homework, I would put in music and listen to it all the time. Whereas in my more current lifestyle, I'm pretty much working on videos for you guys. And if I'm editing a video, I typically am watching a YouTube video as well. And then when I'm done working, I'll typically leave my office and hang out with my wife. In which case, we're usually not listening to music. We're going on hikes or walks or watching TV or just relaxing and talking. And I realized more recently that I'm just not utilizing Apple Music that much. I'm not getting an album or two a month or even a new song or much a month. I looked at my recently added and looking at all the music I've downloaded or added to my library in the past year probably would have cost me 10 to 20 bucks. But because of that subscription model and me having that expectation of, well, I got to keep paying for Apple Music. That's the only way I can keep my entire library. That meant that I was actually spending more on music than I would have if I wasn't subscribing. So no, I'm not going back to iTunes. I'm not going to go back to buying music outright because the truth is there's another subscription that I know some of you are not a big fan of and it's not a sponsored video where I'm not doing this because I get any benefit out of it. Though I guess I kind of do as a YouTuber. But the other service I'm still paying for that I don't plan on canceling is YouTube Premium. There's several reasons I'm keeping this membership and it's one because I watch more YouTube than anything. Typically when my wife and I are watching TV we're watching stuff on YouTube and I watch YouTube while I work and in that subscription there is YouTube Music. Now most of you just rolled your eyes and I completely get that because believe me when I first tried YouTube Music I was not a fan either. The UI was clunky. It definitely did not feel as streamlined or as simple as Apple Music but the truth is reminder I really don't listen to music as much as I used to when I had more passive time in my day whereas now I'm pretty much either working or relaxing with my wife and not listening to music as much as I used to and that means that since I'm going to keep paying for YouTube Premium I'm not planning on canceling that because I utilize it so much and I actually got in on the family plan before they raised their prices so sadly YouTube Premium is a lot more expensive than it used to be but when I signed up it was $15 a month for a family of six which meant that I signed up for that and kind of like my old Apple Music family plan I've basically rented that family plan out to cousins and family members who are paying me back and what I've discovered is that I have way more friends and family that are interested in paying me back for YouTube Premium and less people that are interested on staying on my Apple Music family plan. Lots of people were willing to jump off that and say you know what I don't really want to use it anymore but YouTube Premium I've had two cousins my sister and my cousin's wife uh, both want to get on my plan and they keep reimbursing me for it which means that at the end of the day me and my wife both get YouTube Premium for three dollars a month three bucks a month ad free viewing on YouTube and we can download and have background play on our iOS devices and that also includes YouTube music which I know the UI isn't great it's not super clean and streamlined but at the end of the day when I do need to listen to music which is occasional it's just not a lot I'm still able to tap one app on my phone search up the song I'm thinking of and it has it so at the end of the day I can still listen ad free to any song I want to but I'm just saving significantly more money by not paying for Apple music anymore I suppose that's why you saw me act so negatively towards Apple One because when I saw those offers and believe me I've tried Apple Arcade I tried News Plus I tried TV Plus and I've tried now Apple Music and had it for years and just realized you know what there's so many cheaper alternatives I can go with that I don't understand why Apple One is a good deal but at the same time there's a ton of you guys out there that are paying for the family membership of Apple Music or two terabytes of iCloud storage and you guys see Apple One and say that's a great deal I'm totally signing up for that because I'm gonna get Arcade and TV Plus for free, I'm already paying that much to Apple each month anyway. So this kind of comes back to my original point about subscriptions and services. It's so unique. It's so individual to the person. Some of you, I'm sure, absolutely love Apple Music and will probably keep paying for it till the day you die. I get that. And I'm probably going to be that way with YouTube Premium because it's so cheap and I get so much out of it. Because four people are each paying me three bucks a month. YouTube Premium for me and my wife ends up costing us three dollars and we can access all the music ad free even download it if we need to and yeah okay the user interface isn't as good and okay Siri doesn't necessarily bring up YouTube music by default but there's been references in iOS 14 that they're going to support changing that and some of you are probably thinking but Drew what about your home pods well that's the other thing since the pandemic my wife has been working more from home and because of that I don't blare music on my home pod speakers as much as I used to and it sounds like for the foreseeable future me and my wife are both gonna be working at home 
which has been great. I love having her around and not being left alone for long portions of the day. And because of that, I'm actually selling a couple of my HomePods. No, this is not an ad. They've already been sold. Someone has already claimed them and they offered me a great deal on them. So the HomePods are going away. I know they've been around. They've been in the family for so long, but I don't really have a need for them. They've been sitting on my desk for months, never doing anything. And typically if I'm watching videos or editing something, I'm just using AirPods now anyway, which is nice because they have noise cancellation, whereas HomePods are the absolute opposite of noise cancellation. They make all the noise. So HomePods are going away, but the Google Home Max we still use actually pretty regularly. And the Google Home Minis we have several of throughout the house, which stream directly from YouTube Music and they work. No, this is not a very Apple sheepish video, I know. But a lot of people were asking and it was kind of an intricate explanation. So there's your answer. I'm not paying for Apple Music anymore. Nope, I'm not getting Apple One. And actually, I think the only Apple membership I still have is two terabytes of iCloud storage because I'm buying the new iPhone every year and it's actually cheaper for me to pay monthly for that cloud storage than it would be for me to pay extra for added storage on the new iPhones every year. So that's the only one I can kind of see as worth it right now. But who knows? Maybe in a few months, I'll figure out a way to cancel that membership and save money. So hopefully that makes sense. And again, if you want to keep using Apple Music or you like Spotify, you like other streaming services, that's great for you. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you all for watching. This is your Apple Sheep here, ironically, and I'll see you in the next one.